In this video, I'm going to show you envelopes and automation in Reaper. Now, everything in Reaper can be automated. And to automate things, we're going to use envelopes. So I have a track in front of me here, which sounds like this. So if we want to automate our synth, we go to the envelope button right over here and click it. And that opens up the envelope dialog where we could automate our parameters, volume, pan, width, a bunch of parameters that are pre-effects -effects and mute. Now, if we created sends on this track, they would show up here as well. Let's create one by sending the synth to the piano now we can see the sends or the envelopes right here, volume, pan, and mute. And if we add effects on this track, let's add an EQ right here. Now we could automate all the parameters on the EQ plugin right down here. So like I said, everything in Reaper can be automated. But to keep things simple, let's delete the EQ and that send. So let's start off with volume. To see the envelope on this track, just hit this box right here, and we see the volume envelope down over here. Now we could also just select this track and type V, and that puts the volume envelope down here as well, and it'll toggle. Now I should explain how Reaper handles the default automation mode. If we go to the envelopes, we can see by default, all our tracks are in the automation mode trim read. And what that means, if we hide the volume envelope and check the volume on our synth right here, we can see it's minus seven dB. But if we create a volume envelope for this track, it's gonna transfer that minus seven to the envelope right down here. See? And then it changes the fader on this track to be zero. So basically, anything we do with this envelope can be trimmed later with our fader. That's why it goes back to zero to start over. So to work with envelopes, we could draw right down here, hold on control on the PC or command on the Mac. And a cursor changes to a pen tool. So you can just draw freehand an automation envelope. Let's hear what this sounds like, bringing it up and down over time. So we hear the volume change based on the envelope we created. And besides drawing points, we could also just create them. Hold down shift, create a point here, 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 and here. Then we could drag this one down, or this one up or down. And we can move the points just by dragging them. We could delete the points, Alt on the PC, Option on the Mac, and delete them one by one. We can copy and paste points. Let's say we set up a volume right here, and we prefer the volume a bit lower over here. We want to go back to this level over here. Create a point here, copy this point, and then paste it over here. And it puts that same level from over here over to here. So we can copy and paste that points very easily. And we could select multiple ones. Let's draw something like this. Right click, drag to select these points and just move these or copy them and paste those. Let's undo that. And we could also work with 
envelope segments. So if I create a point right here and here, I could adjust the level in this section, Alt Shift on the PC or Option Shift on the Mac, and adjust the envelope segment like this, up and down, just for the section between two points. But if we don't want to create those points ahead of time, we could do it with a time selection. Let's undo all this and instead create a time selection right here. Control Shift on the PC or Command Shift on the Mac, and we can create an envelope segment automatically. Move it up or down. Create another one over here, up or down to adjust sections or segments that easily. As I mentioned before, we could trim our envelope on the volume fader. So if we create an envelope like this, we could then trim the overall level of the track right from here. It starts at zero, but we could adjust it to taste while still using this envelope. Or we could edit the envelope directly. Go right over here to this knob and bring up or down that envelope. And it basically does the same thing, except we see it over here. And we can still trim it with our fader over here. Now, besides drawing our envelopes, we could also write in real time while the music is playing. And to see this more clearly, let's open up our mixer. Let's grab the tab over here and move it to the left, which puts our faders over here. And then we'll adjust the fader size so we just see one fader. So now we could write this fader instead of the knob so we can write automation. So to do this, we need to change the automation mode. Go to the envelopes, and right over here, we could change it to write. Or we can just right click the button and choose it down here, right. And that changes this button to be red and our fader to be red, letting us know we're in write mode. So now if we move the fader during playback, we're gonna write to our envelope or write automation. Let's give it a shot. And just like that, we wrote automation or an envelope to this track. But if we play it back, watch what happens. Down here, it automatically rewrites the automation because we're still in write mode. So we need to switch it to a different mode. Let's put it back to trim read. The colors change on the button and the fader. And that's going to play back and we'll hear the envelope. But if you notice, we're hearing the change, but we're not seeing the fader move because we're still in trim mode, allowing us to trim what we're hearing. Bring it lower or louder if we want. But if we want to see the automation or envelope playback, we could switch it to read mode. Then it turns to green, and this fader doesn't actually work. It's going to move or play back our moves, but we can't adjust our level with the fader. Now it's right some pan automation. Go to the envelope and choose pan, and that creates a pan envelope right down here. Or we could just select the track, type P, and that also shows the pan envelope. Hit it again to toggle it. So now we could write some pan automation the same way during playback. We could switch the mode to write mode, 
But once again, watch what happens when we play the track. Not only does it write to the pan, it also rewrites or raises the volume. So what we need to do is go to the volume envelope and disarm it by unselecting R. Or we could do it right here. This button, deselect it. Now it's not gonna record volume automation, but it will record pan automation because it's turned on right here. So let's write some pan automation right from here. And once again, we should take it out of write mode. Let's switch it to read so we can see playback of our volume and pan automation. Now we could also bypass the envelopes during playback. Go right here to this button and deselect it. Now the volume envelope won't play, but the pan envelope will. Or turn off the pan and hear neither. Or just the volume. Or both. So we could bypass any envelope we want. And we could also hide the envelopes. Just go to the menu over here to hide them. But they're still going to play back, and we're still going to see the changes over here and here. The envelopes are just hidden. And we can see them again over here. Make them visible. We're typing V and P. Or we could right click over here and choose Show All Active Track Envelopes. That's going to show them both because they're both active. Or we could hide them the same way Hide All Track Envelopes. And we could also delete them. From here, clear envelope. Let's undo that. And we could also move the envelopes to the media lane up here. Move to media lane. Now the volume envelope is up here instead of down here. We could still do all the same things we did before draw on it, delete points. Create new ones, readjust them, all in the media lane. Let's do the same thing with the pan. Now the pan is over here and the volume is over here. Again, we could adjust our points, redraw the envelopes, all in this lane. Or we can move them back by right clicking the envelope. Show envelope in its own lane for each one of these. Now they're back to their own separate lane. Now there's a few other automation modes we should know about. Besides write, trim, and read, we could also use touch and latch. Let's switch this to touch automation mode. And that changes the button to this yellow and the fader, letting us know we're in touch mode. Now with touch mode, it's not gonna write automation unless we touch the fader, either here or here. And it's just gonna write while we touch the fader. If we let go at any point, it's gonna go back to the automation or envelope already written. So let's rewrite this section over here. I'm going to grab the fader when we get there and let go afterwards. Let's try it.
So I grabbed it right over here and let go right over here. So it just rewrote during the section here, before and after. So with touch automation, we could just punch in and punch out where we want to change the envelope. Let's undo this. And this time let's choose latch mode. And then it changes to purple. Now latch mode is very similar to touch mode and that it's not gonna write automation until we grab the fader. But once we grab the fader, it's not gonna stop writing until we stop playback. So it's not gonna punch out if we let go of the fader. So let's make the same move. We'll punch in about here by grabbing the fader, but even if we let go, it's not gonna stop writing. It's gonna continue until we stop the transport. Let's give it a shot. So I let go right about here, but it's still recorded or still wrote automation as the transport played. So it punched in when we grabbed it, but it didn't punch out until we stopped playback before and afterwards. So that's envelopes and automation in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you could use it and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go.